So you want to make a great website, but you don't know where to begin. Maybe you're a business owner of some kind and you want to make your own website without having to pay someone else to do it. But you don't know what to do and what not to do. Well, I want to explain to you my thought process on creating great websites and how to get yourself started. Just because you know how to create a website in Squarespace doesn't mean you know how to create a great website. So let's talk about how to make a great website. Step number one of creating a great website is you have to start with the content. Let me say this plainly. You cannot design a great website without all or most of the website content being complete. That's all the text, images, and other information you want to have on the website. Think about it. If I'm designing this beautiful about page with some temporary text like this, what would happen if when the content gets written, it's a wall of text with four images that need to be included? This entire layout wouldn't work anymore and you'd have to redo it. And so you've just wasted all that time. You always need the content first. An effective layout is designed around the content, not the other way around. You need to see the content first in order to choose the most appropriate layout for it. Another example is if you have a team page on your website and each of the team members have their own bio. Depending on the length of the bios, that would determine if you should just put the text on the page or if you need to put it in a pop-up, or if you needed to put the bios on completely separate pages. And if you had to redo the team pages because of that, a lot of work would need to be redone. Don't get me wrong, you can try to make a website without having all the content ready, but be prepared for redoing a lot of sections of your website or your website not having any cohesion. When I make websites for clients, I make it clear at the beginning, I'm not doing anything until the majority of the content is provided to avoid just this. After you have the content, try to look at it and visualize how you can put it into different pages and layouts. Sometimes it could be obvious where a three column layout with icons can be used or a simple two column layout with an image. I made a three part series on turning content into layouts, which you can check out like in the description. One of the most important takeaways from that series is that your content is split up into pages and each page is split up into sections and then each section needs a layout. A good guideline to follow is the best layout is the least complex it can be, as well as it doesn't get in the way of the users consuming the content. You should also avoid layouts that get in the way of the user consuming it. An example of this is putting content behind a slider when it could just be on the page. Like these three testimonials, for example. I know sliders can look nice and possibly prevent some extra scrolling, but having those testimonials on the page in a three column layout, for example, would ensure each user can scan and consume the content without putting in the extra work of clicking on the slider. After your intense layout brainstorming, next up is to wireframe the website. Wireframes look like this. They are super basic plans or outlines of how your website would look. The easiest way to do this is with pencil and paper. But if you wanted to use something online, there are wireframe tools like this available. For online, I would recommend this one. Here are my actual wireframes that I made for fake websites in college. I have a certain way of drawing images, headings, and paragraphs in my wireframes so they're all consistent, but you can come up with your own if you'd like. Some quote unquote wireframes can get super detailed, but that's not necessary with a small website. Or if you're working from a builder like Squarespace or WordPress with a page builder, then you can definitely get away with having a less detailed wireframe. It's up to you and how detailed you want to get before the website is actually developed, but it's important to have something. And the more detailed you are, the less chance of work needing to be redone later. Some extra things to keep in mind is how your website pages will link to each other. If your website's for a business, most pages should have some sort of call to action. These call to actions can be added to your wireframes, typically at the bottom of the page. Usually a call to action is book a call or get a quote, something like that. The call to action should be appropriate to what page it's on to. If you're on the careers page, the call to action should not be contact us for a quote. You'll also want to frequently link pages together. A link block section like this not only looks great, but by adding these helpful links, there's a huge benefit to user experience. So you want to add these wherever you can, where they make sense. And then repeat this process of wireframing for each section and page of your website thinking about call to actions and how the pages link together. This next bit is for the coders. 
You cannot design a great website by starting to design it as you code it. If you're using something like Squarespace or WordPress with a page builder, you can definitely get away with styling the fonts, buttons, colors, etc. as you build out the pages of your website. However, you cannot get away with this as easily if you're coding the website. Tweaking the design is much faster to do in some kind of page builder when compared to coding. So if you're coding the website, it's best you work off of some fully designed and planned out website design, usually made in software like Figma or Adobe Illustrator. Keep in mind, this is how to get the best results. Obviously designing every website fully in a high fidelity mockup is the most ideal, but not every website project has that kind of time or budget. After your pages and page layouts are all planned out, the glue that keeps it all together is the navigation in the footer. I made videos on each of these, link in the description if you want to check it out. To give you a summary for navigations, keep it simple. Logo on the left, menu in the middle or the right, and a button on the right for a call to action. The more pages a website has, the more thought out and complex the menu has to get. Or even with an e-commerce website, you should have something like a mega menu as it's been shown to increase conversions. But odds are your website is less than 20 pages, may not be e-commerce, so a simple menu with a few dropdowns could be as complex as it gets. As for the footer, you'll want to make it as complex as possible because users like mental challenges. Just kidding. Just like the navigation, keep it simple. From my experience, if you just follow this layout for footers, it provides the best user experience for the average business or organization. The first column is for your logo and a brief description about your company or organization. The second column is to list the basic pages of your website. This helps users browse to the other pages of your website rather than scrolling all the way back to the top. The third column is for more salesy things like products or services, as well as it just lets the users know what you offer. And the fourth one is for contact information. This is also for conversions. Every website has different goals, pages, and designs, so work with how it best suits your website needs. But the most important goal to strive for with your footer is to make it useful. Users actually do use footers on the website and go there for key information. In fact, a lot of people go to the footer for the careers page, so make sure you make it as useful as possible. After you've completed your navigation in footer, let's look at some generalized tips to make your website as great as possible. First, you'll want to use real images. I made an entire video on this, which you can check out, link in the description. But the main idea to take from that video is that real authentic images you've taken is a hundred times better than any stock photo found online. Not only taking a photo with your phone is free rather than licensing a stock photo, but a real one portrays authenticity, trustworthiness, and just leads to a better user experience and likely conversion. Just look at these two images and tell me which one would make you hire them more. Another tip is to keep it boring, simple, and everyone's favorite web design word, clean. The only person that cares about how creative, unique, and special your website is, is you. However, if you create a website that is so unique and not following common standards or practices, the users on your website will have a worse user experience, which leads to a loss of conversions. As a web designer, I personally see it all the time where websites could be improved, but because the business owner is emotionally attached to some aspect of the design, the website and inevitably the business suffers. And you don't want to be that person. Your website's main goal is just to give information to the user. There are some things to say about being rememberable and unique. But if that gets in the way of the user consuming the content they want, you're hurting your site more than you're helping it. Another tip to creating a great website is taking your content and making it better. Because the odds are it can probably be improved. I know you're so proud of your chat GPT generated word salad. And because I'm telling you to look at it again, you don't want to listen to me. I get it. But it's the words and the images on the page that are the most important factor for someone converting on your website. So if you're using AI to generate word garbage on your website, you're not doing yourself any favors by saving that time. I'm a huge advocate for almost never using AI content on your website. It can be great for coming up with catchy titles or topics to write about, but when you use it to generate the paragraph content, you are being lazy at such a large expense. I know not everyone is a writer, but you don't have to be a professional writer to make good content on your website. 
You just have to know the business or topic you're talking about. AI is becoming just like stock photos. Users can sense it a mile away. I would only recommend AI to come up with ideas. If you're using it to do the work for you, you're doing your website a disservice. Aside from staying away from AI, you can also improve your content by making it more informative and helpful. Let's pretend you're writing content for a lawyer website. Well, you've written the content about your services, the history of the company, and some credentials. But there's so much more valuable content you can have. Like, are there frequently asked questions? And I mean real frequently asked questions, not how do you offer services at such a great affordable cost? What's the typical cost or pricing for different scenarios? What are your case studies or what kind of situations have you had worked on in the past? Do I need to have anything prepared to begin the process? Or if there's limited parking in the area, where can I park my car? There's tons of great helpful information that you are not saying that could be helping your users. Probably most of the users on your website have a specific question that they are looking to have answered. So put yourself in the shoes of the user and think about what they would want to have answered. The last tip of creating a great website is after it's laid out, designed and built is to get people to test it and provide feedback. Your friends, family or employees can all do this for free and quick. Do a test, ask them to do a simple thing like find out how much your services cost. Drop them on the homepage and say nothing and just watch what they do. Look for some areas of friction or confusion where the website can be improved. From my experience, there is almost always something valuable you can take away from a user test. And that concludes the video. Hopefully you can make a great website. If you're making the website on your own and turns out to be more difficult than expected, reach out to me and I would love to create your website at thewebsitearchitect.com. Pricing is on my website at all times, so you can know exactly how much it would cost. If you want to be a better web designer or developer, check out my other videos, or support me on Patreon.